It's my pleasure to welcome you to the Clark Howard Show, where our mission is to serve you and empower you so you make better financial decisions in your life. Up first today, a month from today, Costco's City Card is eliminating yet more benefits for you. I'm going to give you my advice what you should do about the Costco Citibank Visa that was a phenomenal card, now is just a great card. Also, automatic renewals drive me crazy. If you've ever forgotten to cancel a free trial or didn't realize you were up for renewal on a subscription, I got advice for you. Okay, so let's talk. The Costco Citibank Visa is a huge deal. It is uh, such a common card for Costco members to have because it's free with the membership and the benefits are really great because you get 4% cash back on gasoline. By the way, Sam's Club members with the Sam's Club MasterCard, you get 5% cash back on gas. Anyway, and the Costco Visa, you get 3% cash back on travel, 3% cash back on restaurants, 2% cash back for shopping at Costco or Costco.com. Never use it anywhere else because you only got 1% cash back, anything out of those areas. But Costco, when they moved from American Express to City, City offered a whole bunch of other throw-in benefits as well. And one of them already died, and that was trip cancellation, trip interruption insurance. And now, City is pulling the rug out from under something that was a big benefit of buying electronics and other things that have manufacturer's warranties that are significant on things that are expensive. You got an extension of that warranty by using the Costco Visa automatically. And it was a great, great benefit for people. And now City is yanking that away from you a month from today. So does it mean the Citibank Visa card with Costco is now trash, not cash back? No, you still have all the cash back. But there are circumstances you should not use it now. If you were taking a trip that you booked, let's say with Costco Travel, and you're going to get the uh, 3% cash back on the Costco Citibank Visa. You gotta get money back, particularly if you're an executive member, you're doing expensive travel, gotta be executive member anyway, because you got money back from that too. But what I'm suggesting you do is, if you're a regular traveler, you probably have other travel reward cards. I've got one from Capital One that comes with free trip cancellation, trip interruption insurance. And I get 2% back for everything I purchase anywhere. So I am using it now when I buy Costco travel instead of using the Costco Visa card because then if I have to buy, let's say I'm doing a cruise, and for cruises you want to have trip cancellation, trip interruption insurance because you don't go on the cruise, you lose all your money. Well, now you have to pay real money, usually somewhere around 6% of the cost of the trip, to buy a trip cancellation, trip interruption policy separate. But on the other hand, if you use a card like I'm doing with the Capital One card, you're getting the trip cancellation, trip interruption insurance. I'm getting 2% back instead of 3% as I would with the Costco Visa. So I'm giving up 1% to save 6% on the cost of the trip, not using the Costco Visa anymore, using the Capital One card. And again, there are many cards that come with trip cancellation, trip interruption insurance. Now let's move to the second thing. The latest thing cities yanking out from under us is the extension of the warranty. Lots of cards come with that in return for using that card shopping. But to shop with at Costco, you have to use a Visa card. 
can be any Visa card. So you have to have a Visa card that comes with an automatic extension of the manufacturer's warranty, and you're buying something expensive, then that is something you should consider if the card you're using also comes with some form of cash back. So what do we use now when we shop at Costco? We use a 2% cash back card. That's 2% cash back anywhere we go that comes with an extension of the manufacturer's warranty. As you know, I don't buy extensions of warranties. Don't do it. I don't do it on anything I buy. But having it thrown in for free, well, that is a wonderful added attraction and benefit. As for Citibank, why they are reducing so many benefits, a lot of people in the financial industry believe that Citibank overpaid to buy out American Express on the Costco business. And that they are trying, they're like the dog that caught the car and doesn't know what to do with it. And that's just speculation, but probably why Citi keeps reducing the ancillary benefits that come with the Costco visa. Krista? This question is from Ginger in New Hampshire. My husband and I are taking a three-week cruise to the South Pacific just about a year from now. We will end up in Auckland, New Zealand, and plan to spend a couple of days there before flying home to Boston. What airline is the best to fly in that part of the world? We definitely need a plane that offers the roomy extended seating where you can stretch out and sleep due to the flight being over 40 hours. Okay, so this is is a fascinating thing because uh, the best airline in the world is Singapore Air, but that would not be a practical choice out of there. Um, But... Air New Zealand, the national flag carrier of New Zealand, dominates service from New Zealand to the United States, has something that is a really oddball product that we talked about when it launched a couple of years ago. It's called Sky Couch. And what happens is a couple buys, basically you're buying three coach seats instead of two. And this specially designed row of three seats then goes down into uh, kind of like a narrow double bed. And so you sleep sideways together um, or you take turns sleeping. And you have, you don't have like a lie flat bed that somebody in business class would have, but you're also not paying, you know, $4,500 or whatever to sit in that seat to the U.S. from Auckland. So the Sky Couch is kind of a unique product in the market. And I'd look at it online, look at videos on YouTube of it, and see if that would be a nice approach for you. Because otherwise, the difference, the gap between uh, economy and business class is gigantic, as is the cost. Premium economy in between is kind of like a compromise. You can look at that. But premium economy doesn't go lie flat. This is the equivalent of a very tight lie flat. And this is from Dave in Wisconsin. I recently stayed at a hotel in Wisconsin that charges a $1.50 nightly for fee for having a safe in the room with a $10,000 insurance policy if something is stolen. They say the fee is optional, but they will not take it off your bill until checkout. You get charges for each night you're staying at the hotel. When I checked out, I asked for the fee to be removed for each of the two nights I was staying. They accidentally only removed it for one night at first, and I went and reviewed the printed bill. I went back, and they removed it for both nights. It's not a huge deal being at such a small amount, but I asked the hotel manager why they put this fee on in the first place and if they've ever had a safe robbed, and he said no. He said this fee is mandated by the hotel group, and their particular branch cannot opt out of it. Okay, so uh, Dave, first of all, I can't even tell you how much I congratulate you for going through your bill like you did line item by line item. Hotels get away with every assortment of made-up junk fees, sometimes with completely innocuous kind of descriptions that you don't even realize you're being ripped off, and it's because of the Internet. 
we comparison shop hotels online and every hotel wants to look like it's cheaper than it actually is and so they dream up all these added on fees and so that's what's going on here and you with your eagle eye made a difference you know who never seems to notice people on expense accounts and so more expensive hotels and conference and convention hotels have become legendary in a bad way for dreaming up every kind of junk fee imaginable I talked recently about the one, I think, I threw it in mentioning there's a hotel in Los Angeles, a hotel chain, that is now charging you a daily employee fee, where on top of your room rate, you're paying an allocated cost in addition for the staff of the hotel, rather than that being part of your room rate. That's how crazy it's getting. And Vicki in Georgia says, my husband and I are considering buying a container home. We are empty nesters and think this may be a cost savings heading into retirement. What is your advice? Bless you. Thank you. Sorry about the sneeze. I hope I didn't hurt your ears. <laughs> uh, so I love the idea of container homes. There's going to be every kind of possible use of shipping containers because they're just piling up and they can be used for so many different things. Like near me, there's a coffee shop, an independent coffee shop that built the coffee shop out of a shipping container. And so uh, we also talked about the affordable apartment complex in Houston that is built out of storage containers and I mean, shipping containers and how much cheaper that made the housing where you took something that is this perfect rectangle and you can do all kinds of creative things with them even putting several together and create some very interesting architecture architects you're bored by the stuff you do drawing whatever you come up with more cost effective ways to get these shipping containers out of these storage facilities they're sitting in and put them to use like this and so, Vicki, I love the idea, but you're going to have to hunt around for people who have interest in this experience and see what work they've done to see if you like what they could design and build for you. Now, coming ahead, who has not ended up paying money after a trial subscription? Guilty. Oh, I thought you were going to be the only one who oh, has no. not paid. No, I've, yeah. Okay, it's happened to all of us. Automatic renewal happened to all of us. I want you to know that if there's anybody who hasn't, you're obviously the one perfect person on earth. Okay, I got advice for you straight ahead how to keep this from happening anymore in your life. You know, we, we talk among ourselves about how we all get ripped off in these uh, these free trials. And the way I've decided in my life is I'm so flaky that I will not do a free trial of anything anymore. I just don't. And that's how I make sure I don't get taken. Anytime I will get a thing from... Uh, newspaper i subscribe to a bunch of newspapers and it'll say if you pay this way then you are agreeing to automatic renewal so i don't do it and i let my subscription expire and then they call and you know there's this thing called a telephone and then they call and they say um you've been a subscriber for a long time why did you not renew and i say because i won't do auto renewal and what deal do you have for me? So all the leverage flips to me, and I just won't do auto renew or free trial. The only time I will even consider a free trial is if I don't have to give a credit card and there is no automatic joining of whatever it is that it just expires in that time period. Because we're busy with our lives 
and we lose track of things. But if you are more brave than I am and less flaky than I am, there's something that we have learned discussing among ourselves, and it is a key procedure to follow. All subscriptions in your life, whatever they are to, whether it's to Walmart Plus or Amazon Prime or um, any shopping service, any subscription to any kind of publication, uh, any ongoing membership for a gym, anything like that, you do them all on one credit card. One. And that's all you use that card for, that it becomes a monoline kind of card. Like we talk about with online shopping, using one particular card for online shopping so that you don't have to deal with somebody getting a card and you're like, oh, I got to cancel this and cancel that and whatever. If you use one card, you're going to be able to keep track of subscriptions. This is really important with all these streaming subscriptions. You know, if they're all on this one card, anything you subscribe to all on the one card, you're able to bring them down to size. You're able to figure out, oh, I don't want that anymore, or I don't want to do this, I don't want to do that, and you're much more able to get out of trouble with it and be done with it. Because if you're charging them so scattered, one over here, one over there, one this other place, whatever, all different forms of payment, you lose track of them. Second thing is when you're offered a free trial of something and you're intrigued and you're thinking of doing it, go to the section, not the fancy stuff. Go to the part that says how you discontinue, how you cancel. Very, very important for you to do. And if you keep a calendar in your life, use your calendar. You use the calendar to figure out when that free trial period ends that you have to notify them. Or when, if you are stuck in an auto renewal, when that auto renewal would take place. So that before those things happen, it pops up on your daily calendar and you deal with it then so you don't get stuck. Last thing is check your statements. If you have something you're doing that's auto debiting from a checking account, let's say, or you haven't done this thing with one credit card, look at your statements, look at your statements, look at your statements, because that is important. And there's all this stuff about companies that make it really easy for you to sign up and ridiculously difficult for you to cancel something. When you're looking at the terms and conditions of a free trial, if they say you cannot cancel the same way you signed up, ultra easy, that you have to send an email or you have to call in and hope you get somebody at some number they never want to answer, then don't fall for the bait. Do not fall for the free trial because they're not valuing you. They're cheating you. Krista? Russell in Texas says, Clark, your team and others always talk about cutting the cord with cable TV. However, this is typically packaged with some deal to get the internet as well. So I cancel the TV portion. They raise the internet only rate by $20, $40 or more. I now have to pay Hulu, YouTube, Netflix, etc., and I'm back at the same price I was paying the cable company in the beginning. Right. Sure, some services are free but full of commercials or getting local news, weather, etc. is slim to none. I'm failing to see the cost savings when cutting this cable TV cord, and in my neighborhood, I only have one option to get internet. So uh, you're bringing up a very, very valuable point, Russell. And the answer to your question is coming piece by piece, and that is not being a prisoner to the cable monster for internet. And just recently, both Verizon with its wireless home internet and T-Mobile with its wireless home internet greatly expanded the areas of coverage in the country. Now, depending on how you use your home internet, you may not find their services robust enough, but they are a deal by comparison. 
So with uh, Verizon is running ads right now that if you're embedded with Verizon for your cell phone service, again, another tie-in, you can get Verizon home internet for about 25 a month. If you were T-Mobile and you have your cell phone with them, you can get T-Mobile home internet if it's available where you live for 30 a month on certain T-Mobile plans. Otherwise, with each of them, you tend to pay 50 a month. Um, not a perfect solution, but then you were away from the cable company saying, oh, well, if you don't use this for TV, we're going to charge you 90 a month for internet. But if you use this for TV, we're only going to charge you 50 a month for internet. And so this is what you're talking about is what so many of us have faced. And the wireless internet service that will steadily become more robust and more reliable and faster is going to provide new competition to the cable monsters. And you should be able to get local TV and news. Oh, over the air. I'm sorry, I didn't say that. It's okay. So, uh, yeah, depending on where you live, you may with a simple antenna or a more complicated one you would put in the attic of your home, you may be able to get a lot more local channels with a better picture than you even knew existed. And we've got a great tool on Clark.com, a streaming TV tool, where you put in the channels that you want to watch, and it tells you what's the best deal for you in terms of all the streaming services. We're very proud of that, that we created that. This is from Lauren in Delaware. Could you provide some insight into paying for children's extracurricular activities? My two boys, eight and five, recently expressed an interest in karate lessons. I took a look at two places, and one is $300 a month for both kids and requires a six-month contract. So $3,600 for the year, or $1,800 if we do it for six months. I found another studio that's $185 a month for both boys and does not require a contract. No surprise, the boys love the pricier studio and have <laughs> friends that go there, of course. In the past, we have signed them up for extracurriculars through our local YMCA. The Y doesn't cover, offer karate or martial arts classes. The idea of paying $300 a month seems crazy when I could put that money in a $529. This is our first year being able to max out our 401ks, so we are finally in a position to open 529s for our kids. Wait, 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 wait. Repeat that again, because this is something only, I think, 3% of workers do. Yep, we finally are, this is our first year being able to max out 401ks. That's so impressive. When the kids want to do costly curriculars, how do I, extracurriculars, how do I find a balance of saving for their future while also making sure they enjoy their childhood? Do we rec decrease our retirement savings or just not save as much for college? So push comes to shove in life, and you can't do everything, right? And uh, my automatic when, when Krista started reading your question was, well, why don't they go to the YMCA? Mm -hmm. And then you answered that for me, that the Y where you live doesn't offer karate or other martial arts. Um, maybe you should talk to the director of your location of the Y and see if they could have possibly any interest in offering karate or martial arts because or there's obviously a big market for it. Yeah, or try the cheaper studio, even though I yeah. don't like it as oh, much. Oh, yeah. Yeah, one of the things in life, you will disappoint your children from time to time. And paying the lower price for both of them means that you're not having to make as stark a choice about retirement savings or college. So as you know, and you were doing it in the right order, saving for your own retirement is a higher priority than saving for a kid's college because retirement, you got me, myself, and I to pay for that. College, there are many alternative strategies for making college more affordable or for a kid to have to pay his or her own way in part or even in full if that's necessary depending on a family's financial situation. Um, if you were having to make a choice of cutting, though, if your state offers a tax benefit for participating in a 529, I would cut back your 529 contributions to that state maximum amount that they will give you a tax break. And if you need to, reduce that amount from your 401k contributions. I just said that, didn't I? I also want to just add in, <laughs> if it were my kids, I definitely would go with the no contract, cheaper studio, just to see if they even like it. Because, I mean, 
I've had my kids, you know, hate something after a month or two. They get tired of it. So, um, and let me tell you, Chris's kids have done every athletic activity that a kid could do growing up. My kids, not so much. Michael in Georgia says, I, re- I am recently married and my beautiful new wife wants to open a joint checking account at a big mega bank with the money we have received as wedding gifts. She likes the convenience of the big banks while traveling and potentially moving. Not only does she want it to go to a mega bank, but she wants it at, the, at Wells Fargo. <laughs> she currently has an account with them and says she's never had any issues, but I don't trust them based on their history. Am I justified in this view? Are there still reasons to not to use a mega bank and go with a smaller credit union or bank? Also, I know you travel. Any tips on how to access cash and funds without the convenience of a mega bank? Okay, so several things here. There are people who find the convenience of using the four giant monster mega banks as being so valuable that they're willing to deal with the constant customer no service issues that come with Bank of America, Chase, Citi, and Wells. As for the scandals with Wells, they never seem to end. I was just reading in Barron's Magazine in the last week that Wells is facing more fines for having uh, cheated and mistreated customers. I mean, just it seems to be the song that never ends at Wells Fargo. As far as modern banking, the question I would have, how often does your beautiful bride go to a branch? How often do you go to a branch? Most people can't remember the last time they went to a branch. And now with the online banks, you actually have such enormous convenience and you eliminate all the costs and they pay you real money on your savings, and most of them offer a significant number of free ATM withdrawals per month, fee-free, from a pretty extensive network of ATMs. Um, I have not had a traditional bank account with a bank in decades, and it's been great being freed from the banks. And so, Your wife sounds pretty traditional in her view here. I'm not sure this is the hill to die on as a newlywed, uh, but I think she's thinking about this in a way that is not really the way things work today. And I wish both of you a wonderful, great life together. And thanks so much for listening today. Have a wonderful month of December. I hope that your December brings lots of joy, time with family, time with friends. And I said something back in November before Thanksgiving I want to repeat again. So a lot of Americans, a lot more than historically did, live alone and they live away from family and friends. And this is a time that you can, a year that people can feel more lonely through the Thanksgiving period all the way into the new year. We've got less daylight and all that. And so reach out to people. Reach out to friends you've kind of lost touch with over time. Odds are they're going to really appreciate it. Family. Um, You may lose touch with a brother or sister who lives across the country. Call them. Email them, text them. They may really enjoy hearing from you. And you gave a gift to them. Their response, if they're really happy to hear from you, will give a gift back to you. And know that ultimately what matters in life, health obviously, but family and friends matter so much. Family, we're stuck with sometimes. We're joyous about them other times. Our friends are a treasure. Don't lose touch with them. Have a great day.